Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, consider subscribing. Today, in this beginning hydroponic tutorial, I will be covering how I prepare my plants for the system, how I mix my hydroponic fertilizer, and how I measure the PPM and pH in the nutrient solution and bring it to its correct optimal levels. I don't claim to be a hydroponic expert, and I do appreciate constructive criticism. So please feel free to leave your comments below. So let's get to it. Let's take the mystery out of mixing hydroponic nutrients. My name is Sharon and I am the over 60 crafter. We will need several items for growing plants in this system. One of which is hydrogen. Hydrogen is a growing medium composed of expanded clay pebbles. I use hydrogen for several reasons. It helps support the plants, it's pH neutral, it's light in weight, it's reusable, and it provides lots of oxygen to your roots. There are several substitutes for hydrogen, such as coconut coir and perlite. Net cups. I chose two inch net cups, as the holes in my system are one and seven eighths of an inch. The size of your net cup would be determined by the size of the holes in your system. Plants. For the purpose of this demonstration, I bought plants, but normally I would germinate from seeds and then transplant the seedlings. I will be planting kale, sive, shadow benny, lettuce, parsley, and celery. Be sure to choose plants that are suited to your location. You will need a scale that can measure in grams and that can be zeroed. There are many water-soluble fertilizer blends for hydroponics, but I will be using one that I currently have on hand, which is a herb and pepper formula that has an NPK of 11, 11, 40. These figures represent the macronutrients, which are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium by percentage. Formulas also usually contain micronutrients, such as copper, iron, zinc, and others. Knowing the NPK values of a fertilizer can help you select one that is appropriate for the type of plant you are growing. For example, if you are growing leafy vegetables, you may want to apply a fertilizer that has a higher nitrogen number to encourage leafy growth. If you are growing flowers, you may want to apply a fertilizer that has a higher phosphorus number to encourage more blooms. When mixing your hydroponic fertilizers, they usually require that you add calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate, which is also known as Epsom salt. pH is adjusted by using an acid to lower it or a base to raise it. You may require pH up or pH down, depending on the acidity or alkalinity of your water. I use food grade phosphoric acid instead of pH down. I have never had cause to use pH up but your local water may be more acidic than mine's. Gloves and goggles. Remember to wear goggles and gloves when mixing your formula or adding pH up or pH down. When you increase the aeration levels in your system, your plants can use the hydroponic fertilizers much more efficiently. You would therefore need an air stone, an air pump, and some quarter inch tubing. You would require a PPM or TDS meter for measuring the conductivity which is a concentration of total dissolved solids in the water, and a pH meter, which measures the acidity or alkalinity of the water. You should also get some calibration fluid for each meter, as you must calibrate them ever so often. Hopefully, you should have your pump and reservoir ready for the hydroponic solution. I would suggest you either paint your bucket on the outside or use some insulated lining, which would maintain the temperature of the water and prevent algae growth. Fill your 5 gallon bucket with tap water and set it aside for at least 24 hours. This should be sufficient time to allow the chlorine to evaporate. Next day, wash the hydrogen thoroughly to remove the dust and other debris. Begin preparing your plants by washing off the potting soil, if store bought. Massage the roots gently and eventually the soil will wash away. Try and get as much of the growing medium off as possible. 
insert the plant into the net cup, ensuring that the root goes through and that the length is sufficient so that when the net cup is placed in the pipe, the root would touch the water. Grab a handful of the hydrogen and place it around the plant. Make sure it's enough to keep the plant upright. When you purchase your hydroponic fertilizer, it comes with mixing instructions for both seedlings and mature plants. I will be mixing the formula for mature plants. According to the mixing instructions, 5 gallons of water would require by my calculation 12 grams of fertilizer, 12 grams of calcium nitrate and 6 grams of magnesium sulfate. However, having said that, I usually find I require double the amount they recommend. Be sure to follow your mixing instructions on your fertilizer packs as you can always add more if necessary after checking your PPM levels. Remember to zero off your scale with your container before weighing your nutrients. Let's measure off 12 grams of calcium nitrate, 12 grams of the 11-11-40 fertilizer, 6 grams of magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. Scoop out some of the water you left overnight into your mixing bucket. Empty your fertilizer into the bucket and mix thoroughly until dissolved. Be sure to wear your gloves and goggles. Next, add the magnesium sulfate and mix thoroughly until dissolved. Finally, add the calcium nitrate and mix thoroughly until dissolved. You can also add the ingredients one at a time in a one gallon bottle and shake vigorously to dissolve. Before we add the mixture to the reservoir, we will need to measure the PPM of the water in the reservoir. If we look at the conductivity in the mixing instructions under mature plants, it has a recommended PPM of 1500 plus the source of the water. The PPM of the water in my reservoir is 211. Therefore, my final PPM level should be around 1700. Add your mixture to your reservoir and let it circulate for at least 15 minutes before you take your PPM reading. This particular PPM meter displays the highest value at 999 and after that the amount must be multiplied by 10. So in fact my reading is 175 times 10 which is equal to 1750. This PPM reading is slightly higher than what they recommend. You can add some of your chlorine free water to lower your PPM. If your PPM is below the recommended level, you would need to mix some more formula to add to the solution. The optimal acidic pH range for hydroponic crops is important. An incorrect pH level will reduce or completely lock out the amount of nutrients your plants can absorb. For pepper and herbs, they recommend a pH level of 5.8 to 6.2. After my nutrients had been added and the solution left to circulate for these 15 minutes, my PPM level was 7.1. I therefore needed to lower it by adding either pH dung or food grade phosphoric acid. When adding phosphoric acid or pH dung, always wear gloves and goggles. Never add water to acid. When adjusting pH with either pH up or pH down, start out with 1 ml per gallon. Wait 15 to 30 minutes and test your water again. Continue this process until you have brought it to the optimal pH level. I used phosphoric acid and added a total of 40 drops in order to bring it to a pH level of 6.2. If your pH is lower than the recommended range, then you would need to add pH up. Now that your PPM and pH levels are at their optimal range, go ahead and add your plants. Pump and air stones. Mm -hmm. 
you should begin keeping records throughout the growing season. It's the best way to understand what you're growing and how your crop responds to the nutrients provided. Keeping records may sound tedious, but it serves the purpose of making sure you get the most out of your harvest. Over time, the nutrient concentration within the solution changes as the plants take what they need. You would be required to change out the nutrient solution every two to three weeks. The discarded solution can be used for the plants in your garden. I hope you guys enjoyed this beginning hydroponics tutorial. For the hydroponic experts out there, if you do things differently, drop me a comment below. For the newbies, don't forget to check out my Easy Build Hydroponic Tower video, which gives detailed instructions on how I built this NFT system. Well, till next time folks, happy growing and bye for now.